The objectives of this talk are to describe the indications and technique to performing the appendix ultrasound. This will be followed by a review of the sonographic anatomy and pathology of the appendix, and then we'll discuss how to incorporate the appendix ultrasound into your practice. The sonographic identification of the appendix was first described by Dutch and Leopold in 1981. This was followed in 1986 by Pilot's description of the graded compression approach to the evaluation of the appendix. The technique of performing the study should proceed in a systematic way. Your patient should be in a supine position and one should employ the use of a high frequency linear transducer since the appendix is a very subtle structure which can e easily be missed by a lower frequency curvilinear probe. Identifying the appendix can be a challenge, especially since there is usually abundant air within the bowel, making the identification of this small structure quite challenging. One may proceed by asking the patient to identify the point of maximal pain. This may help in localizing the appendix within the right lower quadrant. The appendix is often visualized between the peritoneal line and the iliac vessels, or just overlying the psoas muscle. Since there is often abundant air within the bowel, identification of the important structures in the right lower quadrant can be very challenging. The way to overcome this challenge is by employing the graded compression approach, which involves applying slow, gradual pressure with your linear probe to the right lower quadrant with the intent of displacing the bowel gas in order to better visualize the contents of the right lower quadrant. In this example, we can clearly see the appendix overlying the psoas muscle at the level of the iliac vessels. Here is a beautiful example of an appendicitis. Note the targetoid appearance that the appendix will take in cross-section. Visualizing the appendix can be challenging since the structure can easily be lost within the contents of the right lower quadrant. What can help in identifying the appendix is recognizing the classic features of the appendix, which is that it is a blind-ended tubular structure. You may also be able to visualize the discrete layers of the appendix, or you may simply identify the hyperechoic outer wall with its lymphoid tissue-dense internal hypoechoic band. This will often surround the mucosal lumen interface. This hypoechoic band is rich in lymphoid tissue and thus will disappear with age. This is a beautiful example of a subtle, non-inflamed appendix. Here's another beautiful example of a non-inflamed appendix. Here you'll also be able to appreciate the various wall layers within the appendix. Another important key aspect to, to appreciate is that this appendix is overlying the iliac vessels at the level of the psoas muscle. Diagnosis of appendicitis is made when a non-compressible tubular structure is identified within the right lower quadrant with a maximal outer diameter measuring greater than 6 millimeters. This may take on a bullseye or targetoid appearance. The structure should lack peristalsis, which allows you to distinguish the appendix from surrounding bowel. You may also identify secondary features of appendicitis, including an appendicolith, transducer tenderness overlying the appendix, or periappendiceal fat. Now we're going to review several examples of appendicitis. Getting comfortable with what appendicitis looks like sonographically will allow you to become more confident with your ability to identify appendicitis at the bedside. In this example, we can see a targetoid structure measuring one centimeter. You may also appreciate a very subtle hyperechoic structure in the middle of this appendix and some very, very scant posterior acoustic shadowing. In this example, there is also the presence of an appendicolith. In this example, we can clearly see that there is a big, bright, targetoid structure. And what you'll also appreciate is a very subtle surrounding hyperechoic wall. This is yet another example of appendicitis. In this example, you can see a targetoid structure with a blind end, yet another example of appendicitis. Here's another beautiful example of appendicitis. And what I'd like you to take note of in this picture is that in addition to having a targetoid structure, there's this plump periappendiceal fat surrounding the appendix. 
What the sonographer is also demonstrating here is that with even with compression, the appendix doesn't change its shape. And this will allow you to identify the appendix and distinguish it from surrounding bowel, which under the effect of pressure um, will actually collapse upon itself. And the appendix, even with pressure applied, will maintain its targetoid structure. This is another beautiful example and dramatic example of appendicitis. Um, this appendix is measuring out at nearly two centimeters and what you can appreciate here is this golf ball size appendicolith. Um, and it again maintains its structure and shape even when pressure is applied. Here's another example and you can appreciate the blind end of this appendix again with this appendicolith noted. This is another example of appendicitis. Here the sonographer is measuring in long orientation and you can clearly see the blind ended structure and a very, very thick appendicolith within the lumen of the appendix. What we can appreciate here in this very interesting and rare occurrence, um, here there's the presence of two appendicoliths. Both of them denote the very, very classic features of having a very bright, echogenic um, appearance sonographically and the appearance of posterior, posterior acoustic shadowing. And here in this clip, we can appreciate that what pops out before even appreciating the structure of the appendix, you can appreciate that there was actually the presence of an appendicolith. In this example of appendicitis, we can appreciate that there is a targetoid structure in the right lower quadrant. But what's very interesting here is the sonographer applied um, color flow Doppler, and you can appreciate that in addition to having a wall um, or an out mean outer diameter that is clearly greater than six millimeters, there's also a lot of um, hyperemia to this wall, which you can also confirm by just putting some Doppler onto your image. And while ultrasound is an excellent imaging modality for the diagnosis of appendicitis and carries a specificity ranging from 88 to 100 percent, the inherent limitation of ultrasound is that it's not a sensitive imaging modality for the diagnosis of appendicitis, with a sensitivity ranging from 44 to 90 percent. There are several reasons to explain the low sensitivity of ultrasound for the diagnosis of appendicitis. One must consider that this is an imaging modal modality that's highly dependent on operator skill. It will also be highly influenced by patient's body habitus. Remembering that healthy appendixes are exceptionally difficult to visualize. And then an understanding that the lie of the appendix will also influence the level of difficulty in finding this appendix within the right lower quadrant. In postmortem studies, it was found that 60 to 70 percent of the population actually has a retrocecal oriented, retrocecally oriented appendix, which will make identification of the appendix by ultrasound quite challenging. Pregnant patients, like pediatric patients, are a special demographic of patients where the effect of ionizing radiation can be detrimental. And while ultrasound is the preferred imaging modality for the diagnosis of appendicitis in this patient group, the study is even more challenging as the appendix will be shifted upward and outward from its original lie by the growing uterus. Ultrasound as an imaging modality for the diagnosis of appendicitis has been a hot topic within the literature. What was found in this study by Van Randen and colleagues is that the more features you have of appendicitis, the more likely you were as the sonographer to pick up appendicitis in your patient. In their study, the findings of transducer tenderness, thickened appendix, and peripendicillial fat, when all three findings were identified, corresponded to a probability of diagnosing appendicitis of 95%, which corresponded to a specificity of 92%. When only two of these features were identified, the probability of identifying appendicitis went down to 91%. Fox and colleagues looked to answer the question, what is the diagnostic accuracy of EM-performed ultrasound for the diagnosis of appendicitis? After a one-day course where EM residents and attendings were taught the protocol, 
and using the features of internal diameter of 6 millimeters or greater than 6 millimeters, non-compressibility and lack of peristalsis. They found a sensitivity of 65% for diagnosis of appendicitis and a specificity of 90% for EM ultrasound diagnosis of appendicitis. And while ultrasound is the preferred imaging modality for diagnosis of appendicitis, it is well accepted that CT scans are an important imaging modality in equivocal cases. As Krishnamuthi and colleagues described, the answer probably lies in a staging protocol. In their study, using ultrasound as the primary imaging modality for diagnosis of appendicitis and CT in equivocal cases, they were able to achieve a sensitivity of 98% and a specificity of 90% for the diagnosis of appendicitis. As Krishnamuthi and colleagues described, ultrasound should be employed as the primary imaging modality, whether this be performed at the bedside or by radiology. And CT should be reserved for equivocal cases with a concerning history and physical exam. So in conclusion, bedside ultrasound can be used to diagnose appendicitis. Ultrasound should be the first-line imaging modality for pediatric patients, young adults, and pregnant patients. And while ultrasound is a specific study for the diagnosis of appendicitis and can rule it in, a negative or equivocal study does not rule out the diagnosis of appendicitis, and in those cases, CT scans should be obtained. Thank you for your time and attention. This completes our lecture on the bedside approach to the diagnosis of appendicitis.